Welcome everybody, welcome from the Turing School of Regulation. Uh, this, is a, this is another interview that we are conducting uh, during this period, during the second wave of pandemic. We have been working quite intensely during these uh, uh, latest years, uh, uh, dealing with a series of issues concerning the regulation of so-called digital economy, innovative services, uh, digital platforms. Um, today, we are delighted to be here with uh, Raymond Orsini, is uh, director of the Sustainable Development Foundation here in Italy. He also uh, works and collaborates with the Italian National Observatory on Sharing Mobility. So the focus of the interview of today is exactly about the shared mobility services and innovative services in the field of this particular sector. So as we always do, uh, we would like to uh, thank again uh, Raimondo for kindly accepting our invitation. Thanks to you, Stefano. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so um, I would like uh, to start uh, uh, directly with, <laughs> with the first question. We know that uh, uh, as a, a national observatory on sharing mobility, you have just released a very interesting report about the state of the art of shared mobility services in Italy. And we would like to ask you to illustrate uh, and sketch out a little bit what is the current situation concerning these services, especially uh, after the pandemic and during this new wave. Thanks very much. Um, as you know, we are uh, running and, and managing together with the Minister of Environment and uh, many uh, other um, operators and companies and research center, the National Observatory for Sharing Mobility. And we are also proud as Italians that this is a single unique case in Europe because every year since 2016, we are delivering the national report on the state of the sharing mobility. Um, so we give all you know the situation about the data, about the services, about the regulation and many proposals. Um, First of all, let me tell you that uh, what do we mean for shared in mobility? Because um, we started from a very, uh, let's say, specific uh, use of the of, of the expression sharing mobility. So, what car sharing, bike sharing, scooter sharing, uh, carpooling—you know—the the technical meaning of the sharing mobility. But our in our mind, sharing mobility is the shared mobility. So it includes. Uh, all kinds of mobility that you can share with other people, especially in cities. So it does include, for example, bus, metro, it does include um, trains, regional trains, everything but a car sing with a single driver in it and only one person in it. So the shared mobility is, first of all, uh, a vision, a, 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 a typical way of um, moving uh, people in the in the cities uh, and try to prevent the use of cars with one person. That's why we gave the the title to our national conference this year: less cars. Less cars is the goal of the sharing mobility. Having said that, uh, about your question about the state uh, of the situation, I think we need to distinguish very clearly the uh, a situation before COVID. And the pandemic, pandemic, and after that. So, if we have, if you look at the data of the shared mobility, in particular of the typical services uh, of, of the sharing mobility until February and March 2019, meaning before the lockdown, you could see all the data could see a, a tremendous increase of services of car sharing, bike sharing, scooter sharing, all services in terms of registered citizens in terms of vehicle number of vehicles in the cities in Italy in terms of rent per day rent per hours all the numbers were going up so Italy was in particular some some cities in Italy Milan Turin Florence Rome Bologna all in the center north less in the south and this is something very important Italy was becoming uh, one of the leading uh, countries in Europe about the use and the and, and the growth of the shared mobility. What happened after after the, the lock with the lockdown and after the lockdown until now? Uh, shared mobility is more or less following uh, the the uh, the decrease of the demand of mobility. So we had 
a reduction of up to 90% during the lockdown of the use of the shared mobility. Uh, during the summer and in September, the, it was coming back to the old numbers, and now we are going down again. So what we can say uh, about the situation is that uh, share mobility and sharing mobility uh, reflects uh, in general the, the, the uh, mobility demand, but it can give also an answer to, uh, to some possible use uh, that cannot be, uh, let's say, linked to the, to the everyday and transit-based um, use of mobility. So for example, we had the new services, uh, what we call monopattino in Italy, so the scooter in English, that is not the scooter in Italy because that's the motorbike. The monopattino is the new, is a new service that is tremendously increasing in Italy, even during the pandemic. Uh, but this is not for a, for, for a weekday, this is more for the Saturday night, for the weekends, for example. Uh, so if we want to analyze the single services, there are different uh, differences between the single services. Um, and these differences, we, are, we, we think that they will stay also when hopefully the pandemic will, uh, will, be, will be over. Um, so there are many differences between the car sharing and, and the scooter sharing and the uh, ride hailing. And you know, it's something that is growing and it will grow, but in different ways and different numbers. Okay? Uh, and this is linked also with your work because it's very much linked with the regulation or the lack of regulation. So the way how this share mobility is growing depends also on, on the absence or the presence of a specific regulation in the cities. And this is the case of the scooter sharing, for example, that has no, had no regulation at the beginning. And so there was, we can say, a mess uh, in the cities. There was, a, a, let's say, an offer much bigger than the demand. Uh, and now, we will see what's going to happen about with the regulation of this in, in, in the future, because many cities are rethinking about regulating. So one of the leading points will be the regulation and the, and, and, and the role of the regulation for, for the future. Okay, uh, it's really interesting what you, what you just said in terms of perspectives of these different services, especially when you talked about the fact that uh, some of these transformations will become permanent in a way. So uh, the COVID-19 related crisis is not just a temporary phenomenon, but can have permanent effects in the future. And you almost anticipated the, the second question I wanted to ask you, which was exactly uh, the one concerning regulation. So we wanted to uh, ask you, uh, in your opinion, uh, whether regulation in Italy concerning these different services was a tool, uh, until now at least, that uh, represented an obstacle in general or overall uh, towards the development of these services, or on the contrary, whether regulation until now has been more or less supportive. And what can be done in the future, according to the suggestions that you also make, uh, make out in your report? And what is also the difference between, for example, the Italian situation in comparison with other major European or Western countries or other countries that you know? This is a very good question because I think this is the, one of the central uh, points for the future. Uh, in Italy, but I think all over the world, the sharing mobility services as were growing because there was no regulation. Um, and I still remember that uh, the first national conference on sharing mobility that we organized, I think it was in 2016, uh, when basically there was only car sharing. So there was, we had some car sharing operators in Rome, Milan, uh, Turin and Florence. And the, and the Minister of Environment, the Italian Minister of Environment, came to our conference. He opened up the conference and he said at the beginning, uh, we love sharing mobility, now it's the time to regulate it. And when he said that, most of the operators in the audience were freezing and they would say, oh my God, don't please don't regulate it. Because uh, the strength of the share mobility was that uh, the share mobility in terms of car sharing, bike sharing, you know, the, the strict, in strict sense. Um, the, the strength was that uh, 
with the difference from bus, trams, metro, and, and public services, there was a, a lot of freedom. And in this freedom, the market was open. And so there was only a problem of the offer and demand. And once you have solved this, then, you know, car sharing started with this idea. Let's see if we have the demand. Let's, let's think about uh, price, cost, and uh, maybe and we, we also can pay uh, to the city. Uh, it was something like 1,000 euro per car at the time per year. Uh, and let's see what happens. Let's see if we can make it without any intervention, any regulation. Okay, so it, it was started like this, but then it was clear after a few years that you need regulation for two reasons. First, there is a problem of a level playing field for different actors. Uh, so if you have, for example, one city that gives a regulation in one way, another city that doesn't give any regulation, another city you give a different regulation from the first city, then for the operators and also for the tenders, becomes really impossible. It becomes impossible also to plan uh, the growth of shared mobility. So this is the first reason. You need regulation sometimes because you need a level playing field. The second point was that you need regulation in order to avoid a kind of dumping of different uh, services. Uh, do you, I think you remember, for example, the, the, the bike sharing um, uh, the, the first bike sharing schemes that were not station based, they were free float, there were some Chinese companies almost invading our cities with bicycles that were left everywhere. And this was also a problem of safety, a problem of, you know, beauty of the cities. So you needed also to kind of maintain a kind of, of balance uh, of, of space and equilibrium in the cities. So, but so far, you have two possible models. The first model is, let's say, the model of known or let's say less regulating, okay, giving the freedom. And this is what's happening in big cities with car sharing, for example. You, you just put a cap, uh, for example, for a maximum amount of cars. Uh, and you put maybe, you ask for some money in return for giving the park uh, space, and that's it, okay? And this is the first model. And then there's a second model where there is a public intervention much stronger, meaning that for, for services like bike sharing, for example, that cannot have a return of the investment with the market, then the public authority becomes a regulator and, and an investor even more than a regulator. So for example, the best, the best bike sharing scheme in Italy in terms of performance is the city of Brescia, and in Brescia, the bike sharing is uh, managed directly by the public transport service company. Decided to, you know, to provide this service and invest in this service, okay? So there are two possible models, and I think that there is not one single answer. It depends on different services, and it depends on different cities. Uh, the big cities have a big demand, so, uh, it's very different from the small cities that need shared mobility, but with, with minor numbers. So maybe they need a public intervention, a regulation, and fun, a public funding. And last point is about the mobility as a service idea. Because with the apps and with the smartphone, all this could happen. All the shared mobility could. And it's only thanks to the, to the technology, because uh, this, but on the other hand, uh, there is a fight now between who has the data, who has the vehicles, and who has a journey planner and a mobility as a service. Who is the leader in terms of power? It's a power game because the data are power. So the regulation could, should also include this aspect. Okay. For example, we are proposing as a uh, national observatory that most of the system should be completely open data to everybody instead of having one winner that takes all and then it, it takes also the data for everybody and then there is a battle between the operators and who has the data if the data could be shared publicly open and then the operators can run for the best service this could be for example a winning model but it's an open 
uh, question. It would be nice to talk and discuss it in detail in the future. Yes, it's a, it's a really huge issue that maybe uh, will be addressed uh, in a uh, in few days in the forthcoming Digital Services Act uh, of the European Union. We'll see whether also at the European level there will be some provisions concerning the need for data sharing coming, especially from uh, big tech and big digital players uh, having the possibility to reap the benefits of network effects inside cities. And with respect also to the issue of the European level of uh, regulation, uh, as we all know, at least in Italy, in, in this uh, very recent day, we, we are discussing also at the parliament level about the huge funds, the huge monetary resources that will come from the next generation EU uh, program. And in that program, there is a lot of stress on the digital transition and the green transition. With respect exactly to this issue, what is the role that, according to you, can be played uh, towards a green transition by shared mobility services? And are there any services inside this set of services that are better posi positioned than others to tackle this uh, societal challenge? Well, first of all, um, it's very good to put digital and green as two pillars that can help each other, you know. Uh, to our point, of, in our point of view, meaning the Sustainable Development Foundation, green and sustainability should be the, the, the North Pole, the leading star that you should follow. So the digital services are good if at the end they can help sustainability. So if at the end they can be used to to, to improve the environmental conditions of our community and the social condition. Digital should not be uh, an end in itself. It should, it should, okay, so in this sense, shared mobility and sharing mobility can be really useful um, because of the, of the idea of less cars that I was telling you at the beginning of the interview. Italy, in particular, has seven, more or less 700, 650 cars on 1,000 inhabitants, okay? And we are the, the, the highest European ranking country in terms of uh, motorization rate, okay? So we should, we should dramatically reduce the number of cars per inhabitant. And the only way to reduce it is to, is to provide Italian people with different services so that they can forget the use of their cars in the city. And in this sense, digital, uh, services and shared mobility can help a lot. Okay, so uh, in also in terms of environment of emissions, uh, CO2 emissions, but also atmospheric emissions and pollutants in the cities, the less you use the cars, the more you share and the, and the, and the best would be for the environment. So all services, uh, I don't agree with people saying, for example, that car sharing um, it's not good because at the end it's always car. So you use the car and you pollute because this idea is, is valid only if you see the direct emissions from the car. But if you see the system, if you have a car sharing, then people will not use their, or will not buy a second car. If they don't buy a second car, they give more space in the city available for bicycles, bus, so it's a, it's a system mentality, you know? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't only see the emissions of the car. And more than this, the car sharing, for example, can be electrified very, very easily, much, much uh, more, you know, in a way much more faster than, much faster than the normal cars. So the, the sharing mobility for the environment is really uh, an help and for sustainability. But, and this is a sad uh, conclusion, what I see in the ne Italian national plan, for example, for next generation EU, there is a lot of focus on technology, meaning electrification of cars, a lot of focus on infrastructure, big infrastructures, and less focus on sustainable urban mobility. So, on the pillar on the three pillars of sustainable mobility avoid shift and improve it seems like our politicians are focusing a lot on improving but less on reducing avoiding 
the, the transport demand and on shifting the demand on different transport modes, more environmental friendly. So we are pushing our decision makers to invest more in sh on shared mobility and less on private mobility. This is very important. It's a, it's a cultural change uh, that, we should, uh, that we should foster. Okay, so <laughs> with this uh, quite set conclusion that maybe could be could be in a way changed by the development <laughs> of these issues uh, during the next months, we would like to thank again uh, Ramono for your availability today and for the very rich and interesting conversation. And we hope to see you again, maybe for an update uh, about these and other issues. Thanks again. Thanks to the Turin School of Regulation. Thanks.